So I'm Chris McCandless Stone, Fleet Performance Manager at Eurostar. Here we are at York with Power Car 338, which was donated to the Railway Museum a couple of years ago. The Eurostar Power Car that's in the museum today is a classic example of the first international high-speed train operated in the UK, France and Belgium. A very technically complicated train, capable of operating on four voltages, seven signalling systems, cross-working between the UK, the Channel Tunnel, France and Belgium. It's a seamless journey for our passengers. OK, my name is Bob Gwynn, I'm the curator at the National Railway Museum and we're stood here at the corner of the Great Hall overlooking the Eurostar. Now the Eurostar is a really important uh, train for us because basically it shows you how the electric railway developed. It was once fitted with a uh, third rail pickup equipment and that goes back to 1904 and of course right through to today you've got these trains working now running on different voltages they're the fastest trains that run in Britain and it's really fantastic to have a member of that class of train here on display at the National Rail Museum. Well it's really interesting to have a Eurostar train here because of course the railways frequently wanted to develop a railway to Europe under the Channel Tunnel and that was the idea behind the Great Central Railway but here we are with Eurostar. Finally we got round to building the Eurostar and um, making it run through the Channel Tunnel. And then finally, finally, we had a high-speed line from the Channel Tunnel to London St Pancras. Um, and really, it shows the way that the railways are developing into a high-speed network, just as you are familiar with if you go to France and Germany, but which, which we in Britain have been lagging behind. So Eurostar is a good symbol of that development and that thread of history that goes back to the Great Central's attempts um, of an idea to build a, an international railway. So bringing the Eurostar to York was a really important thing for myself and for both Eurostar. It's our legacy to the future and it's a really good example here at York of a high-speed train in amongst some other high-speed legends. We've got the Mallard, we've got the Rocket that everyone remembers, we've got a Shinkansen bullet train, we've got knock-ups of a high-speed train cab and the, the future IEP. But the Eurostar, have an actual power car here with the Channel Tunnel model, is a real legacy for the business and for the railway industry and the museum of our railway history. We look around the Great Hall today, we've got the Mallard, we've got the Rocket, we've got the Eurostar. These are all things that people will recognise and instantly can attribute to. That's the railway, that's high speed, that's something that's worth, worth, worth looking at. Let's hope that the future, the Eurostar, remains here now as its legacy. To say, this was high speed engineering, this was high speed railway, this was the first high speed international railway in the UK. And for future generations to inspire the next generation of the high speed railway and the next generation of engineers. To me, the really great thing about Eurostar is it reminds you of greats of the past like Mallard. I mean, Mallard was one of those projects where the engineer, Nigel Bresley, actually worked with um, his colleagues abroad, the Frenchman Chapelon, who looked at Bugatti trains and so on, and he came up with this world-beating steam locomotive. And Eurostar is like that. It's a train where the people worked with their colleagues abroad in France, in Belgium, to, to deliver a train that was capable of running on different voltages with different signalling systems and run on the traditional lines initially in the UK down into Waterloo that actually did the job of taking people quickly uh, from London to Paris or London to Brussels. So it kind of reminds me of, of that engineering triumph of the past which enabled you to actually deliver a really good product but by doing so the way you did it was by talking and looking at what went on abroad. So it's really inspiring to me and hopefully it will inspire future engineers in the way Mallard inspired engineers in the past.